You guys have been asking, just like you did years ago, about where's the four rotor. This is the three times that. Where is the 12 rotor? Now, for my 40th birthday, what I want is to get this engine running. We have stopped everything else until this runs. You will see that we already have made some massive progress doing custom things. The whole team is dedicated to getting this engine running. And so with that, I just wanted to really quickly go over a lot of things that some of you don't get to catch up on because you're like, oh, I didn't see the video on that. You guys are kind of shitty YouTubers. There's always something this way, that way, up, down, left, right. So let me give you guys an update of how we got to this moment with this engine and the channel for my 40th birthday. I'm gonna start right off the bat and do one of my most insane moments that have gotten me here and it is one of the most entertaining. It is the all-wheel drive four-rotor burnout. right there was truly the first moment that the car had ever launched. Ryan Scotto saying, hey, let's chain it up. And they were originally gonna do two toe straps and he looked at me and he's like, you know how to use the brake, right? And I'm like, yeah. And so he took one of the toe straps off. So you just get to see the car swaying. It's just one of the most pinnacle moments of my life. And the reason I mentioned that one first is we were just at Irwindale getting kicked out in the three rotor while drag racing. And I saw where the burn yard used to be. And it made me realize, holy shit, that really happened. So with that moment, comes one of the most amazing moments in my life that really validated everything here in the shop, and that is racing the four rotor versus Ken Block. <laughs> That was never, ever, ever supposed to be the goal with this car. The guys at Hoonigan did something incredible and gave me a chance. It ended up being the number one and still is the number one video in all of the This First That series. A very big bummer. Ken is no longer with us. Finding the right words is a little difficult with that, but I'm very thankful for him and the rest of the team that made all of that possible. I still have hidden underneath there the hood. I had Ken sign that hood after it ripped up into pieces, and I'm very thankful I did that. Number three, every single dyno that I can think of right now in ascending order of horsepower. Enjoy this. We have been just making progress, and I am so thankful that all of these engines, sure, this one, it hasn't ran yet, have proven and luckily worked long enough for us to grow. I've never had an engine have a problem unless it was a unique problem. Instead of like just absolute incompetence, we've had things blow at 2000 horsepower. We've had things blow at the peak while we learn and grow. And that is something I'm very thankful for. This little car behind me, as many of you may know, some of you may not, is the Formula Mazda. This is a miniature version of the full-size Indy car up there, which is on its way of being assembled and running again. I should not be allowed to own that. These cars have been running so well that it's been time to drive them. And as of two, three weeks ago, Joel and I decided to pack up just him and I, and we went to Willow Springs, Streets of Willow, and I cut one of the fastest times in my life. Shaved nine seconds off on the three-rotor, in one session. If you know anything about track driving, nine seconds is incredible. Driving skill and car setup made a huge part of that. But this little car is an absolute riot to drive and I think we're gonna do some crazy stuff with this in the near future as well. So at this shop, I wear a lot of different hats. <laughs> Whether it is fabricating a chassis or shock setup or <laughs> oil, or <laughs> turbos. The best part about being 40 is that I still have hair with keeps. You look at my hair right now. This is the day of turning 40 years old. I have more hair now than I did when I was 35. Two out of every three men experienced some form of male pattern hair loss by the age of 35, and I was literally one of those people. This stuff works. It's gone this long, and not only was I able to regrow some of the hair, the hair that I was having thin was getting thicker. You can see it all the way through here. So I had the hair, 
but it was quickly checking out. I went online, Googled, researched all that, and then I ended up on Keep's website. That's right, they didn't reach out to me. I reached out to them, comprehensive. I don't even have to do anything other than spend this minute talking to you guys. I'd spend less time maintaining my hair with Keeps. Keeps focuses on preventing male pattern hair loss and Keeps always has a special offer. But right now, if you go to keeps.com slash Rob Dom, you can make that happen. That's keeps.com slash Rob Dom. This machine right here is a CNC machine, which stands for like computer number control. That doesn't sound like it describes what it does at all. This thing cuts metal in a beautiful numerical order. Buying this, which is that exact meme of, oh yeah, hey, step one, you just need to pull out your $150,000 machine. Buying this has enabled me to do so many things. I literally locked myself in on a Friday night and would starve to death until I ran one tool across and cut it up just in a straight line. That's all I wanted, to cut a straight line in a piece of metal. It took all weekend to do it and I did it and I was able not to starve to death. I didn't lose any weight. At this point, this machine is now cutting a shit ton of stainless. We're doing just all the things that you dream of. If you were in my spot, everything you see me do is because I would wanna be doing it if I was in your spot watching. Like, oh my God, this guy has these resources. He's just a couple steps ahead of us. Let's see him make shit happen. So that brings me to the next area over here. Thanks to Miller Welding, I've now become a place where we can do everything in house. I remember going to kind of like a, a mentor of mine years ago. And while our adventures went in different paths, I remember looking at a shop and going, this is where you can build a car from scratch. I could not believe, here we are, welding, CNC, wiring. When I was 30 years old, I didn't know how to do any of that. So it shows you when you're my age, you can still always learn, especially with YouTube. You can definitely pick up the next thing and have another skill in your belt. While I look completely disheveled, I'm breathing heavily from picking this up. One of the biggest memes I was ever known for, I don't know who made it, was a picture of me for a thumbnail with my massive Garrett turbocharger. So I wanna say, not only is that the most popular meme that people don't know me, know the meme of one in four guys are happy and the other three guys are getting yelled at by a girl. This turbo has never yelled at me. It's whined, it's screamed, <laughs> but it has never yelled at me. The important part is this right here. What Garrett did, specifically a gentleman by the name of Tim. Tim, if you're watching this, you took a huge chance on me back in 2016. He almost lost his job because of me. It ended up being one of the coolest moments ever. I was the first YouTuber to really do SEMA. It was super controversial. I didn't think it was, but the world definitely thought it was. And poor Tim was looking at, you know, submitting his resume to somebody else. He thought I was gonna get him fired. And he never told me this until later, but Tim took a massive chance on me. And look at where that's come. When you invest in other people, it's a two-way street. I try and give Garrett as much data and obviously their turbos sing their own praise. 10 years ago, this was my finest achievement. All my grounds all oh my gosh. soldered together. That harness was what I thought was the bee's knees. Compare that to what we've done now. Massive growth. This is all in my 30s, mind you. Not my 20s, this is all in my 30s. I went from this hunk of shit, but got me here to now hiding all my shitty work inside of nice, luxurious DR25, and of course using all these high quality wire, mostly pro wire, and my buddy Kevin Vitas have all just been a big part of teaching me how to be a better wire. Wiring's no good unless you have data going across it. This is what's made my tuning possible. Now, this is the physical way of tuning, but Hall Tech, Horsepower Academy, all of these things have just made me a better tuner. <laughs> uh, it's just been incredible. All of the tools, Andy Wyatt has taught me so much along the way. Elliot from TurboSource, TurboLone, helped me get in contact with all these people. You can't get away from tuning and I have the best combination of everything possible to tune as, as good as possible, or at least make me look like I'm better than I am. But one of the most amazing things you guys have enabled me to do, and I don't take this for granted, the rotary half mile record. We set that back at 171 mile an hour back in Michigan, Battle Creek, right before I spun out on drag radials. And then we reset it at 177. And then finally, we did 181. Wait, no, that was the third time with the three rotor and then went back with the four rotor and set it at 190, which is a number that's gonna be very difficult for rotaries to beat. Not impossible. The half mile stuff, as you can tell, is some of the most emotional things for me. This little 340 right here is a testament to one of the most insane, crazy builds we've ever done. We built that car in three weeks. And thanks to all the companies that were involved in that, it's still sitting back in Michigan, but we'll bring it back when we have space to do some cool things with that. But to be able to build your girlfriend's dream car, and first of all, to have a girlfriend that's 
dream car is a wild car. Couldn't ask for anything more. One of the craziest things about you guys believing in us is that that allows us to have some sort of legitimacy to own and play with things like this. This is a race motor that no normal human being gets to have in their lifetime. It's a team-based engine. This is not something I or you would just be able to run normally, but yet with YouTube, we're able to see what it's like to be a race team. Not the driver's skill part, but the building part, right? With this and the 1997 Lola chassis up there, what higher pinnacle of motorsports are we able to experience? That is one of the coolest things that all of this YouTube stuff has been able to allow me to do. And on top of all that, this is not a rotary. I've been waiting actually from some of the former employees of Cosworth to help me rebuild this properly. How cool is it to be able to have something like this, not just as a museum piece, but actually planning to boost it and take it back out on track. You look at something like the 12 rotor, the four rotor, the Cosworth, all these different engines and parts and everything. It's just a bunch of metal formed in weird ways to make power, to have some fun, but more importantly, to connect with everybody. And I'm very thankful for all of you with this journey, as well as continuing on to see what the 12 rotor makes. You know what, there really is one last thing I'm very thankful for. One of my favorite things has always been ending my videos in 